translation uh, platforms or programs, you can find the actual translation for the word Petra, or as many might say, Peter, which means stone. Of course, with most of the translation tools, which are uh, run by Google or some other program, mostly Google, they will translate Petra as Peter. Uh, which is not entirely incorrect, it's just Peter means stone, and um, the deceptive uh, internet that we have today does not want you to know that. So let's find out why. Of course, this gives you an idea for the reasoning behind the word salt Peter being a salt rock. Of course, salt Peter, Peter is often known as a chemical compound which uh, comes in the form of a whitish powder, usually. It's used in the making of black powder. And most today don't have a very good understanding of this compound and what it's used for, whereas in the past um, people might have, of course, that has to do with reducing the capabilities and overall cognitive uh, powers of humanity so that it can be easier easier to control then we look at the tomb or the building over allegedly over the tomb of saint peter being uh, saint rock right peter being rock or stone so it's the tomb of the stone and notice the ornate but the the overall profile of the building uh, ceiling or roof, where you see that dome shape, which pops up all over the world. And then of course you have the quote, dome of the rock in Israel. So antennae come in a variety of different shapes and sizes, various formats. You can find antennae that are Look like hats basically they're conical or cone shaped there are spherical ones there are flat ones there are disc like antenna they of course we're all familiar with the cell towers but there's various antenna arrays on cell towers there's gigantic antennas they they come in so many varieties but of course most of us are aware of the antenna that is the dish shape or like a giant plate and this comes into the concept of water tower designs. When we look at water tower, we find the water towers, we find a lot of the same antenna shapes reflected in the dome, the sort of uh, conical peak on many of them. Uh, you also have, of course, the flat spherical or the circular shapes. Anyway, the cell towers, and some of them even have, uh, very apparently, antenna arrays on top of them. Not to say that the entire water tower is not an antenna array itself. But the explanation for what a water, quote unquote water tower is, is quite ridiculous. According to Wikipedia, a water tower is an elevated structure supporting a water tank constructed at height sufficient to pressurize a distribution system for potable water. Wow, talk about a very long sentence. And to provide emergency storage for fire protection. Clearly written by somebody who does not have a good grasp of grammar. But that doesn't matter when they're trying to uh, control people's understanding, their cognitive abilities. Of course, most of the actual potable water is kept underground, uh, what might be some parts call an, an aquifer, uh, underground reservoir, various names for what is essentially your underground subterranean potable water system, not elevated up into the sky in something that looks suspiciously like a giant antenna. Instead, your water pipes are connected underground, not above ground, and not in sky, as they would have you believe. A lot of these underground containers are built to store water. Some of them are enormous below cities, but they come in also a variety of shapes and sizes. 
So imagine a global computer program, or as we might refer to it nowadays, a artificial intelligence, which is not. It's just a program. It is a simple computer program, although simple, of course, is a frame of reference and perspective. So this global uh, computer program assistant, you will assist in any way that it can and anybody who takes control of it can use that system for their own means whatever it is and that program will do its best to facilitate the user so it's neither evil nor good it is simply a tool which can be wielded in many different ways depending on who controls it This would be like the uh, computer system in the Star Trek franchise in the uh, the spaceship computer system, right? Where it's an enormous database which has all sorts of information and it can be used for the purposes of the user, whatever those may be. In the first season, you had the... Uh, entity or the person called Khan who used the computer system to take over the ship by learning its schematics and how it operates and all that stuff. Of course, the computer system can be used for all sorts of different things. It's self-propagating. It, it has uh, diagrams and information on how to replicate and build different parts of it. It will even assist in doing things like that, but it's essentially just a giant database of information and processing algorithm which will assist the person in establishing whatever or doing whatever they desire. Of course, you have the other side of the coin, which is the Landru system in Star Trek, which essentially controlled an entire populace as a computer program. So that's an example of how a computer program would be used to, in fact, control uh, the behavior and habits of a uh, whole culture. <laughs> This, of course, is um, different to the idea of Skynet, which is a, a pro presented as an evil program, an inherently evil computer system. Although the concept of a computer program being evil or good is sort of ridiculous. It would be like saying a screwdriver is evil because you can use it to uh, kill someone. But it's not inherently designed for that. Uh, guns are inherently designed for killing people, so that's a tool for for destruction, so to speak, but firearms can be used for a variety of different things. Uh, it's all just up to the user and their creative abilities. So a computer program obviously can be used. You know, you can embed it into a weapon system and go around killing people as the Terminator did, but it could be used for many, many other purposes, like, in fact, running a spaceship or a fighter jet or processing your or online order for coffee beans. So this comes to a old book called The New Attractive, containing a short discourse on the Magnus or Lodestone and amongst other, his virtues of a new discovered secret subtle property concerning the declination of the needle touched therewith under the plane of the horizon, now first found by Robert Norman, hydrographer, here unto our annexed certain necessary rules for the art of navigation by the same R.N. Robert Norman, newly corrected and amended by M.W.E. So unfortunately, this work would have been revised since it says newly corrected and amended. There are many books that have been revised and don't even have the reference to the revision. So often when you find the reference to the revision, it may or may not be uh a contemptuous revisionism with the design of damaging and destroying the information that uh, was being uh, proposed, but instead is just for uh, rather honest purposes. And this is uh, imprinted at London by um, B. I can't really read that. I think it says Alding for Hugh Alley or Astley. Astley, I think it's Astley, 1596. This is an old book and would have been revised many times to cover up the secrets in it. 
uh, I don't believe that this document that I'm looking at is as revised as some of the other ones, other versions you'll find online. Here it states the Magnus or Lodestones challenge. Glue place ye glittering sparks, ye glimmering diamonds bright, ye rubies red and sapphires uh, brew, I think it's blue, but it's spelled with an R, so brow, wherein ye most delight, in breeze ye stones enriched and burnished all with gold, set forth in lapidary shops for jewels to be sold. Give place, give place, I say, your beauty, gleam, and glee is all the virtue for the which accepted so you be. Magnus the lodestone, I your painted sheaths this desire? I'm not sure what that is. It's D-E-F-I-E-N-A. Without my help in Indian seas, and best of you might lie, I guide the pilot's course. His helping hand I am, the mariner delights in me, so doth the merchant man. My virtue lies unknown, my secrets hidden are, by me the court and commonwealth are pleasured very far. No ship could sail on seas, her course so run aright, no compass show the ready way, where Magnus not of might. Blush then, and blemish all, bequeath to me that's due, your seats in gold, your price in plate, which jewelers do renew. It is I, it is I alone, whom you usurp upon. Magnus, my name, the lodestone called, the prince of stones alone. If this you can deny, then seem to make reply, and let the painful seaman judge, for which of us doth lie. <laughs> And then you have the Mariner's Judgment. The lodestone is the stone, the only stone alone, deserving praise above the rest, whose virtues are unknown. And the Merchant's Verdict. The diamonds bright, the sapphires blue, or brew, are stones that bear the name, but flatter not and tell the truth. Magnus deserves the same. The New Attractive, the first chapter, of the Magnus or lodestone, where they are found, and of their colors, weight, and virtue, drawing iron, or steel, and other properties of the same stone. The Magnus Lodestone is found in diverse parts of the world, and most commonly in iron mines. And although it be ponderous and weighty, yet it is not found to be of the iron uh, ore. I believe that's what that is. Or you uh, use, I'm not sure, it's a weird spelling there. Neither containeth in it any metal of itself, but hath a certain affinity unto iron or steel. It was called Magnus because the first finder there it was so named, who is Pliny Wheatith, was an herdsman cast India. This stone, as with Cardinal Cusan, hath substantial virtue and operation. His virtue is conferred and nourished of his substance. Of his virtue proceedeth diverse strange effects and operations serving so many good purposes as especially in the art of navigation. Without were there could have been no discoveries by sea, nor the parts of the world made known and frequented it is so known or known and frequented it as now they are and therefore the virtue of the stone of all others may be accounted by the most precious of the most precious of there are diverse forts differing each from the other as well in goodness as in color weight and force but not in property although many have judged the variation of the needle to be according to the distance of the uh, mine where the stone was uh, buried to the place where it be is uh, actually it's not buried that's b f e d which I don't, which would, or B-Z-E-D, or B-S-E-D, 
either way, that his word is, uh, I'm not sure what it is. The first and best, uh, fort of these stones is come out of the Cass India from the coast of China and Bengal and is of the color of iron sanguine color or sanguine color. These stones are very massive and weighty and will draw lift up the uh, something weight of itself in iron and steel. If the stone exceeds not a pound weight, and these are of the finest fort and are sold commonly for their proper weight in silver in the caste, India, where they grow because the best and finest are very rare to be found, for it is commonly uh, a sole stone commonly a soul stone, line up himself in the earth and no shell or piece of another. There is another sort, ah, that's what I keep saying, fort, it's sort, sort of reddish color found in Arabia and the Red Sea, growing broad and flat, much like to a um, millstone, lift, lift, I'm not sure, lift stone, I don't know, or slate. This is not so weighty as those of China, but it is very near as good, and the virtue continueth along the compass as a needle that is touched with it. There is likewise of these stones in Levant, in the Isle of Elba, Hard by a town in the same island called Porto Ferraro, and whence our mariners Bele bring of them and are called there Calamita Preta, that is to say the Black Magnus, because there is another sort that is white and light, like unto a piece of day, Fuller's Clay and is called Calamita Blanca. This Calamita Blanca is found always with the other. Sticking uh, something out of the side thereof like clay, and this white is so forbidden to be um, something in that country because evil women there to apply it to destroy conception, whereof this stone is a great enemy. Other things are noted of this white calamita for obtaining of wanton purposes, which I think not credible, and therefore will omit it. These black stones of Elba are mingled with white veins. They are of no great force, nor their virtue of long continuance. Also there are of there's these stones in high aleman they're full of holes like uh something comb not sure what that is a lighter than the other but yet very good and these are of iron color i believe aleman in this case he's talking about what we would call today germany being aleman uh, german in french another sort there is in norway in the iron mines, as in Long Found and other places, their color is black, um, mired, as it were, interlated with gray. These are of the smallest force of any that are found. I've seen also in the mines of Karaka, Karawaka, Kar Kar I'm not sure, in Spain of a gray color, but of no great force. There are commonly brought by horse down to Seville and Calais to be found and oftentimes to Valencia, Alcante and Lisbona. All these stones are different one from another as well in force as in color and weight, yet all are one operation in the needle, the wing one point attractive as I have proved myself by these uh, sundry sorts of them. 
which I have and all uh, something uh, wing iron to them. Yet the philosopher Arroyos uh, writeth that the Magnus draweth not iron unto it, but the iron of his natural inclination moveth to the stone. And though it, this position may seem to carry some truth with it, by the bare view of the sight, when the iron is lighter than the stone, yet contrary wise, you shall find that the stone will move to the iron, if the stone be good, and the iron of greater weight than the stone, so that the weight of the stone exceed not his attractive strength. Nevertheless, we may not thereby take away a vis, a visual and lively spirits from the stone and tribute it to the virtue of iron, for in doing so we should do nature great wrong. For it is apparent that the iron hath no attractive virtue nor power of itself until it have receiveth, received it off the stone. But iron having a certain affinity or natural quality agreeable to the stone, both doth apply and freely receive his virtue, and as a subject suffereth his vital spirit of the stone to impress, and rest quietly in his mature and solid body, which when it hath received by touching the stone, it is endued with the very same property and operations in all respects, though nothing so great force as the stone itself. For as the stone hath power to these the attractive point, so hath the touched iron. As the stone hath two principal points, so hath the iron. And likewise, as the stone has power to draw upon it, iron to it, power to draw iron to it, so will the iron so touched draw another iron to it, and impart all these virtues to another iron in quality, though not in quantity, and thus in all respects it containeth in it the very property of the stone. Paracelsus, writing of the augmenting of the strength of the Magnus stone saith that if this stone be laid in the fire until it be almost red hot and then taken out and quenched in the um, dial of Crocus Martis, it will so augment and multiply his force that it will pull a nail out of a wall. But I suppose by he meant that not that the nail should be um should be fast for then it would be then it were a miraculous matter others have written that in those parts where the magnus groweth in the sea it is of such force that if any ships that have iron in them pass by or over them that they are presently either stayed or drawn down to the bottoms by reason of the iron not these only but many other fables have been written by those of ancient times that have as it were set down their own in uh, adjunations for undoubted truths and this most of all in geography and hydrography or navigation. Therefore, I, with experience to be the leader of writers in those arts, therefore, I, with experience to be the leader of writers in those arts, interesting, and reason for their rule in letting it down, setting it down that the followers are not led by them into errors, as oftentimes have been seen. Um, something it is, that God is mighty and marvelous in all his works, yet he doth not allow us to say more than truth of them, 
and truly his power is as greatly showed in the magnets as in any stone that he hath created. And whoso shall go about curiously to seek out the efficient cause of his properties, I suppose the longer he seeketh, the more he shall marvel, and yet never the nearer his purpose. The virtue of the virtue of the stone is distributive, as many other virtues are much comparable unto uh, musk, that having a sweet flavor and smell itself imparteth the same to another thing as to a pair of gloves, and those gloves give out flavor, favor, and perfume a whole chest of clothes. Um, Co Coven, I don't know, to the iron that hath received received his vir this virtue of the stone will extend and give the same to another, and that iron to another, and so to many. And in this point, the stone is marvelous that notwithstanding you touch ten thousand irons and nails with them, every one of them carrying away as much virtue as will little upon another his like. So they exceed not the weight of a five penny nail. Yet the stone itself will do, will be nothing diminished of its strength, but continue one uh, of one force. Interesting. Um, that's an interesting use of the word notwithstanding there. Usually notwithstanding means something doesn't have standing, meaning it doesn't, uh, doesn't really matter. If I should say here that by the attractive strength of the small magnets of two or three pounds weight, I could lift up or cause to hang by the virtue thereof a thousand pound of iron at one instant, uh, peradventure, you would be doubtful of the success. Nevertheless, by experience in all things wherein consisteth truth and reason of necessity, Reason must yield when truth is present, and therefore, because you shall not remain doubtful herein, thus you may do it and only make proof by two or three nails, if you will, for the same success that you have in them, you shall have in all the rest. Take a common uh, board nail. Touch the head of it with the north part of the magnus or lodestone, then take the same nail and braid it with a piece of wood lightly into some post and, or timber upwards, so as the head may hang down downwards, but not with iron because the iron will take away some part of the virtue from the nail. This done, take another like nail and touch the head thereof, with the south part of the stone, and then if you put the head of it to the head of the first nail, it will hang fast by a whole year or more. And after this manner, you may, if you will take the pains, hang a hundred ton of iron with the virtues of this little stone, and yet the stone, nothing by be diminished of his force. But it is necessary in proof of this matter that you have a very good stone. Furthermore, concerning the other properties of this stone, if you put it in a uh, dry dish and set it to swim in a tub of water, it will turn the something about, and the north part of the stone, after many swervings to and fro will rest and directly show the line of variation imagined attractive point also if you hang the stone by a third thread and that it may aptly move aptly i'm not sure it will show the like effects of as on the water and if you have two stones putting the two south parts of them together, the one will fly and turn away from the other, and like wife of the north points. Likewise of the north points. And further ye shall not, as a special point, that the north point of the stone touching a needle, the wares of a compass, will make the same point touched to the these of the, the south. These south. 
and contrary wise being touched with the point south point will make the same of the north so as always that part of the stone that answereth to the north of the needle is properly the south part of the stone so this book brings into context uh, a idea mainly being that the as the name suggests lodestone these stones might have been used and likely were used at least evidence would suggest so for in fact lading or loading and moving large objects which would of course explain the movement of the giant spheres in costa rica the easter island heads the enormous stones of Machu Picchu, and so on and so forth, rather than uh, we are taught that all of these things were impossibly done uh, by, of course, ignorant historians who are just propagandists, going around saying that the people were too primitive, uh, that had to use specific tools. So in fact, they had more intelligence than we do, uh, as we can see from this book itself, and that you can load up an extreme amount of weight onto ma to, uh, opposing magnetic forces. And in that way, you can disperse the, or you can carry a exceedingly large amount of weight in, in a, a way that you normally wouldn't be able to, just like you can carry a lot more weight on a ship because of the dis water uh, buoyancy dispersion and all that stuff. Uh, the uh, whatever that buoyancy effect is where you can disperse the weight and all that uh, versus a semi because the semi has uh, weight requirements and the weight requirements on ships are not necessary they are in place to control the traffic of of items when in fact somebody who is who well designs their vessel can carry any number of weight or any amount of weight as they would desire Thank you. If you have enjoyed this video, please uh, check out the content, uh, like it, share it, and also there are free books available at the links. If you so desire, you may support my work at any of the options available, Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, etc.